Weltbevölkerung wächst unaufhaltsam. Gleichzeitig schrumpft die für den Anbau von Nahrungsmitteln verfügbare Fläche. Mittel- und langfristig sind das für sehr positive Aussichten für Kali-Gesellschaften. Wir sprechen heute mit Dr. Chris Gilchrist von Davenport Resources, einem, wie wir glauben, besonders aussichtsreichen Exemplar der Gattung. Welcome, Chris. Chris, before we start, please introduce yourself to our audience. Give us an overview of your professional background, please. Thank you, Bjorn. Um, I'm a process engineer with a history in gold, diamond, coal, mineral sand, and of course, potash. I worked in South African mines for 20 years and moved to England in 1998 to become director of the Cleveland Potash Mine in Northern England, where I served for seven years. I became an independent consultant in 2008, and I have worked on many potash projects around the world. For example, Argentina, Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Russia. I also have been a director of many potash companies. So, Chris, now please give us a rundown on Davenport Resources. What are the company's projects? What development phase are they in? The company owns three perpetual mining licenses in Turingia and two exploration licenses. Together, these areas hold over 5 billion tons of potash resource, which represents the biggest potash resource in Western Europe. Potash was the main source of foreign currency for the former GDR. We have captured these assets and now we wish to develop them to the benefit of our shareholders. They are all at an early stage. We have established and announced the extent of the resources, uh, but now we are beginning to conduct economic studies. Very interesting. I, I'm sure not a lot of investors, even Germans, knew that there was extensive potash production in the east of our country. How did Devonport, an Australian company, come to know about this opportunity? And how did you manage to grab onto it? Good question, Bjorn. There were several operating potash mines in eastern Thuringia uh, prior to the reunification. However, these mines were old, they were inefficient and very overstaffed. The mines were closed <clears throat> by the unified German government in 1991, and many people lost their jobs, up to 40,000 in a short time period. It was a social disaster. We have acquired the rights to mine in the areas next to the former mines. These were already drilled and explored by the GDR State Potash Mining Company, and we have all the results from more than 200 drill holes. The licenses were offered for sale by the government in the 1990s, but they were grossly overvalued and nobody uh, made a bid for them. A competitive tender process was repeated about 18 months ago and Davenport um, made a bid for these licenses and Davenport was successful. So we have captured the cream of the former GBR potash assets and we're very pleased with that result. I can imagine, thank you. Now, I, if I understood correctly, Davenport isn't just the next potash explorer, but actually already in a much more advanced stage. So what are your plans, let's say, for the next three to six months uh, with your projects? What are the timeframes we're talking about? Your, within the areas under our control, we have identified at least four or five separate projects. We know how much potash is in the ground. As I said earlier, five billion tons but we need to conduct economic studies on each of those four to five areas. Once we have this information, we can have meaningful discussions with potential project partners to develop these projects. We've completed uh, one study and we're very pleased with the, the outcome and we are halfway through uh, another study. We will complete all the studies by September, but discussions with potential partners will begin next month. That sounds great. Uh, please help our audience understand, though, what the potential is. Are there any comparisons or peers out there that might provide a better understanding of what might be to come for Davenport? The second largest potash resource in Western Europe is held by a company called Sirius Minerals in England. They have approximately half the resources that we have. They have built a market capitalization of about 1 billion US dollars. They are currently arranging a debt and equity package to fund the capital required to build a mine of $3.6 billion. 
we are confident we can develop mines in Turingia for a fraction of this cost. Okay. Let's take a step back. As you said, you have assembled an impressive portfolio of Polish projects, but what made you decide to pursue this opportunity? Why Polish? Potash is unlike other mine commodities. It has got different drivers. It's driven by population growth and improved dietary habits as developing countries become richer. The current global market for potash is about 68 million tons, but it is forecast to grow steadily uh, over the next 25 years by between two to 3% per annum. Future price forecasts are very good. And currently prices are at about $280 per ton and forecast to increase to over $300 per ton in the next three years. Um, in this respect, profit margins uh, by producing potash can be very good. So thank you very much, Chris, for your insights. Um, now, perhaps to sum up, please give our audience an idea why, in your personal opinion, now might be a good time to take a closer look at that. Well, first and foremost, we're significantly undervalued and we represent an excellent investment opportunity. We have huge high quality resources. We're located in a safe jurisdiction. We are in an area with a strong mining history and we have good support from local people and local governments. We are close to the European markets because Europe is a net potash importer and will remain so for the future as European mines close down. And finally, we have a management team who have significant experience in building mines and managing potash projects. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time and we'll be sure to check in at a later point how it all went. Thank you. Thank you.